Thank you, Amy. Please be seated. They put that in bold for me. So good morning, I'm Marilyn Lee, Dickinson State University's Associate Provost and Dean of Instruction. President Mitzel is not able to join us today due to an injury he suffered recently. He is extremely disappointed to be able to celebrate this special event with you all. And he sends his hearty congratulations and best wishes for a wonderful day. In fact, I saw him on the way over in the May Hall, and I bet you he's in his office watching this right now on the stream. Graduating students, family and friends of our students, honored guests, faculty, and staff members, welcome to Dickinson State University's 2019 commencement ceremony. The processional music was provided by the DSU Jazz Ensemble conducted by Dr. Jeremy Wallace, DSU Assistant Professor of Music. The flags displayed on stage today represent the graduates' respective home countries and the tribal flags of our American Indian graduates, as well as our own North Dakota flag and DSU flag. American Samoa, Bahamas, Canada, Colombia, Gambia, Jamaica, Nepal, Philippines, Turkey, USA, Zimbabwe, and the three affiliated tribes. Graduating students, this is your day. Today's ceremony represents the conferral of your academic degree. It marks the completion of your Dickinson State University academic program of study, but not the end of your education or journey of lifelong learning. We applaud your hard work and determination to reach this important academic milestone. Congratulations, and let the journey begin. At this time, I would like to introduce the platform party. I ask that they stand when I call their name. Please hold your applause until all have been introduced. Ms. Laura Nelson, Interim Vice President for Finance and Administration. Mr. Troy Kuntz, Alumni Representative Dr. Carmen Wilson, Provost and Vice President for Academic and Student Affairs. Mr. Nick Hacker, Board Member, North Dakota State Board of Higher Education. Our signer for guests, and students who are hearing impaired is Ms. Ann Robbins. After retiring from academic positions, outstanding faculty members who have spent many years at Dickinson State University and have shown dedication to the institution can continue to be honored members of our university community. Upon retirement, the university may confirm emeritus or emerita status on these exemplary faculty members. One faculty member was elected by his colleagues to receive emeritus status this spring. I ask that this honored guest stand. Dr. Ken Pierce, Professor of Chemistry, 24 years. I also ask that those previously honored as MRI faculty who are attending commencement today to please stand. Dr. Richard Braun, former Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, and Professor Emeritus of History and Interim President 1998. 21 years of service. <laughs> Dr. Myron Freeman, Professor Emeritus of Biology with 30 years of service. Um, I told you I'd make a mistake. Anyway, Dr. Robert Todd, Professor Emeritus of Chemistry with 25 years of service. A 
I would now like to recognize the two students who received this year's Outstanding Graduate Awards. These individuals were honored at a reception held Friday. Please stand and remain standing as you are recognized. Ms. Alicia Dworshak, daughter of Timothy and Lisa Dworshak, is graduating from Dickinson State University with a double major in accounting and business with a minor in leadership. Raised in the country outside of Dickinson, North Dakota, Alicia is a wonderful example of a student who has successfully used her drive and determination to achieve many successes. While at Dickinson State, Alicia was a member of the rodeo team all four years, where she competed in goat tying and barrel racing. Alicia was also a member of the Theodore Roosevelt Honors Leadership Program and was chosen to present at the 2018 National Collegiate Honors Council Conference. Perhaps Alicia's greatest contribution came in Collegiate Phi Beta Lambda, where she served as president of the DSU chapter for two years and as the state vice president of operations for one year. She excelled at the state convention, capturing first place awards in events in 2017 and 2018, as well as placing in the top three at the national convention in two events in 2018. Alicia received the Who's Who recognition in both 2017 and 2018 for, out, for her outstanding leadership as a PBL member and officer. In 2018, she was presented with the School of Business and Entrepreneurship's Boyd Bendy Outstanding Senior in Academic and Accounting Award. After graduating from Dickinson State, Alicia will be attending the University of North Dakota School of Law and plans to open her own firm. According to Ms. Dworshak, I strive to make the world a better place by having a positive impact on those around me. <laughs> Mr. Thomas Cease, son of Ted and Shelley Cease of Bismarck, North Dakota is graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Psychology and a minor in Exercise Science. Thomas is a first-generation college student who made a promise to himself during convocation his freshman year that his college experience would be full of limitless opportunities. He definitely achieved that and more. Thomas was a dual sport athlete for the Blue Hawks, proudly wearing the uniform for both the football and track teams. Thomas earned numerous awards and honors in both sports and was named the DSU Athlete of the Year in 2018. Thomas has been actively involved in research on projects related to substance abuse, personal crisis, and Alzheimer's disease. He co-authored a publication in the peer-reviewed Journal of Conscientiousness, Theory, Research, and Practice. Thomas will be attending the University of Louisiana at Lafayette this fall where he will be taking classes in the departments of psychology and biology, with plans to continue his research on substance abuse. His goal is to graduate with a doctorate in clinical psychology. Eventually, Thomas would like to work at a small university, <clears throat> TSU, <laughs> where he can continue to research, practice, and mentor the next generation of behavioral scientists. He says, I represent those who are willing to go above and beyond out of a pure desire to better oneself in all walks of life. What is a provost? Uh, but seriously, I had plans of what I was going to do. In seventh grade, in fact, I started my plans. I was going to be a surgeon. And so I bought the book Grey's Anatomy, which is not about the TV show, but it's actually about anatomy. And I read it because I was kind of a nerd. And I studied hard and I took some uh, cl college classes when I was in high school. And I graduated early and I went off to the University of Iowa as a biology and pre-med major. And I took 18 credits my first semester and I got straight A's. I took 17 credits my second semester and I got straight A's. 
And by the end of my freshman year, I had amassed between my college credit I took in high school and retro credit and so on, 50 some credits, a straight A's. And then it came my sophomore year. In my sophomore year, I registered for 12 credits my first semester, and I didn't go to class, and I didn't take the exams. And can you imagine what that happens when you do that? Yeah, they fail you, every time. Not being entirely convinced that this was the truth, I tried it again my second semester, and sure enough, trial two proved that yes, they will fail you if you don't go to class and don't take your exams. So, I regrouped, and I said, well, this surgery thing is probably not in my future after all. So I was, uh, went home to my home university, and I was taking a psychology class. And these people came in and said, you know, we have uh, uh, this crisis line, and we need volunteers for this crisis line. And I thought, that sounded kind of interesting, and I did that, and enjoyed it a great deal. So I said, I'm going to be a therapist, and I'm going to go to graduate school in counseling psychology. So I walked my then paper file over to my new advisor and I said, hi, I'm Carmen, I'm gonna to go to graduate school in counseling psychology and I'm sure he opened it up and saw all those Fs and thought, <laughs> really? But I turned it around and I got into graduate school and I did therapy primarily with uh, troubled youth and their families and, then, and I, that's what I was gonna do is be a therapist. And I thought maybe I'll teach a little on the side because I like to teach. And so uh, it came time for me to graduate and there weren't any therapy jobs, but there was a teaching job. Now my father was a professor of adult education. And when I was a child, I would ask him, I would say, Dad, what do you do? And he says, I teach adults how to teach adults. And when you're eight, that sounds kind of silly because what adult wants to be in college, right? And I noticed uh, when I was in graduate school, his office was in the building that, I, that I, uh, my classes were in, so I'd stop by frequently and chat with him, and I noticed that he talked to his graduate students just like he talked to me. I didn't think much of it. And then I got into the classroom and I realized, adult, adults. And, I, and it dawned on me that he was not talking to his graduate students like he talked to me, but rather he talked to me like he talked to his graduate students. So he was training me to be an educator. And I thought, okay, now this is my goal. I'm not going to be a surgeon, I'm not going to be a therapist, I'm going to be an educator. And if I can be half the educator that my father was, I will have been successful. Now you probably realize, and I know you all do, that faculty members do a lot more than just teach classes, right? They, they sit on committees, they provide service to the institution, they do research and all of this. And so I would get on a committee and because I like to get things done, I frequently ended up chairing the committee. And then I was elected to our faculty senate. And then uh, after serving one term, I was elected again. And as I was walking into the building before the election of the officers of the senate, this woman, an associate dean, said to me, you know, you ought to run for chair. And I said, me be chair? I've never even been an officer. And she said, you should do it. And a couple of other people encouraged me. And I thought, all right, I'll try that. And I put my hat in the ring and I was honored to be elected all three of my years of my three-year term. During that time, I also was in charge of this big accreditation visit that universities have to go through. So you look at the last 10 years, what have you done, and these people come and visit and they make sure that the institute is, institution is meeting the criteria that they expect out of higher education institutions. That was a lot of work. And then shortly after that, I chaired the search for a, a, a new chancellor, which is a president of the institution. Also a lot of work. But I got to know the institution, the culture, the history quite well. And once the chancellor arrived, he had an opportunity to make a change in his office, and his entire team was really new. And so he said, um, would you like to be my chief of staff? And I said, oh, okay. He said, I'd like somebody who understands the culture and the history of the institution. I said, all right, I'll do that for a little while, but then I'm gonna go back and be a teacher, right? Because that's what I wanna do. About six months into that role, he says to me, you know, we're searching for an affirmative action officer. You've done a lot of diversity work. We're facing budget cuts. How would you like to be our affirmative action officer? I said, all right, what does an affirmative action officer do? And so I took on that job and I learned a lot and pretty soon I'm getting a phone call and this person on the other end of the phone says, hi, Carmen, you've been nominated for, to be the uh, campus executive officer at a couple of two-year campuses in the University of Wisconsin system. Would you be interested? And I said, would I be somebody they would want? And as it turned out, I was. So now I'm not a surgeon, I'm not a therapist, 
I still like to think I'm an educator, but I'm not in the classroom. And I'm leading a two-year institution. And I did that for a few years, and then I, I was eager to get back to an institution like DSU, a four-year institution with residence halls and uh, students around all the time. And I saw the ad for Dickinson State University, and I thought, what a gem. And I applied, and I was honored to be uh, hired as the provost and vice president of academic affairs. About a year into that, guess what? We're facing budget cuts. And President Mitchell says, how would you like to take on student affairs? We, that person left, and I said, sure, why not? Now, the reason that I like to tell this story to students in particular is because, you know, I had plans. Then I'm not a surgeon, right? So don't plan your life too rigidly. Also, if somebody offers you an opportunity or encourages you to do something, be very cautious about saying no. Because you never know what that If an associate dean said to me as I was walking out of the building, you should run for Senate chair, and I did it, I guarantee you I would not be standing here today in this privileged position. And then the other thing that I always like to remind students, and some of you are going off to graduate school, but you're done with your undergraduate career for the moment, always go to class and take the exams, right? So, um, my hearty congratulations, and at this time, I would like to introduce Dr. Brent Rogers and the DSU Chor Choral to sing Red River Valley.
Thank you very much. That was beautiful. This our State Board of a Higher Education Representative, Nick Hacker. Nick Hacker serves as President and CEO of North Dakota Guarantee and Tile Company. Founded in 1955, NDGT is North Dakota's largest title insurance and real estate closing company with operations in North Dakota, Minnesota, and Montana. Nick continues to drive new, drive new growth through strategic partnerships, acquisitions, and leadership development within his team. Before joining the North Dakota Guarantee and Title Company, Nick spent three years in Washington, D.C., working in government affairs. Prior to his time in Washington, D.C., he spent five years as a business development manager in the Red River Valley, well, that was handy, uh, focused on real estate development. Nick served in the North Dakota State Senate from 2004 to 2008 in District 42. During his tenure, Nick vice-chaired both the political subdivisions and industry business and labor committees. He received a Bachelor of Arts degree in Managerial Finance and Real Estate from the University of North Dakota in 2005. <clears throat> his passion for service continues through his leadership in numerous organizations, including the North Dakota State Board of Higher Education, Stewart Title Insurance Agency Advisory Board, Greater North Dakota Chamber Board, Delta Tau Delta Education Foundation, and several committees of the American Land Title Association. Thank you, Carmen. Apparently, they didn't get the shortened version of my bio yet. So, uh, Wow, that was probably the most festive processional coming in here that I've seen. And I get to do this at other institutions, including those big ones to the east, and you guys top all of them. So way to go, crowd and fans. <laughs> Dr. Pierce, congratulations on well-deserved honor. Good afternoon, faculty, staff, family, friends, but importantly, parents, children of, of soon-to-be graduates, spouses of soon-to-be graduates, your support has been vital. And most importantly, to this fine group of Dickinson State University Blue Hawks, on behalf of the State Board of Higher Education, let me congratulate you on your educational achievements. I always look forward to visiting our campuses, but especially DSU. The soon-to-be graduates here today are a testament of the success of the university, and we are excited to watch DSU continue to meet the needs of our students and workforce through advancing a new dual mission model into the future. DSU is one of the opportunity engines in Dickinson and the gateway to our state's success. I'm thankful for the opportunity to be here and meet with many of the people making it possible. In serving students in the state, it's the board's responsibility to ensure higher education in North Dakota is the best it can be. I'm happy to see this in action today as we celebrate your accomplishments and the high quality of education you received from DSU. Here at DSU, you've gained a great deal of knowledge, learned how to think critically, and how to communicate effectively. You've also learned how to show up. As Woody Allen puts it, showing up is 80% of success. Your drive to show up will serve you well in both life and career. I'm glad to see you chose to continue your education in North Dakota, and I'm encouraged to see you embrace the many opportunities that lie ahead with the time that you have. As Gandalf in Lord of the Rings says, all we have to do is to decide what to do with the time that is given to us. I hope you invest it wisely in the causes that benefit others and allow you to follow your dreams. By coming to DSU, showing up, and using your time wisely, you are now prepared, more prepared than ever before to pursue a career or continue your education. Now, as Dory in Nemo says, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. We look forward to you swimming out into the future to make North Dakota and the world a better place. Congratulations to the class of 2019.
I'm now going to introduce our Distinguished Educator of the Year, Amy Cass. Amy Cass is from Hayward, Wisconsin, and lives in New England, North Dakota, with her family. She earned her MBA and Bachelor of Arts degree in accounting from Lakeland College in Wisconsin. She has worked in public accounting in, finance, in the finance department of health care facilities and as an adjunct accounting faculty member at the Wisconsin Indian Head Technical College. Amy began working at DSU in 2012, where she's an assistant professor of accounting, and she is the advisor to the Business Club, SIFE, and the Phi Beta Lambda. She enjoys working with her students in the classroom and in the CPA, as well as the various club activities held each semester. Ms. Amy Cass will now introduce our 2019 commencement speakers, Ms. Selena Loveland and Ms. Alicia Dworshak. Ms. Selena Loveland is married to Robert Loveland and is a proud doggy mom to her Yorkie Jasper. Uh, she grew up in Worland, Wyoming and is the daughter of Ken and Nancy Hall. Selena will be graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in English, a creative writing track, with minors in graphic design and communications. While at DSU, Selena participated in Students Other Than Average and TRIO uh, Student Support Services and is a member of Alpha Sigma Lambda and Omicron Delta Kappa Honor Societies. Selena worked as a writing tutor, was involved with Impressions Magazine, served on committees for Heart River Writer Circle, Com University, and the Tutoring Center Coordinator Selection Committee. She plans to earn an MFA and a PhD in creative writing with goals of writing fiction and creative nonfiction and teaching writing to college students. I'd like to start by thanking administrators, alumni, faculty, staff, friends, family, and guests for being here today to support us and celebrate with us. I am up here because of one important feature of DSU. DSU is about the people. It may come as a surprise to you, but when the call first went out to the student body, about the opportunity to speak at commencement, I thought, oh, that would be kind of cool, but I quickly for us. I didn't believe I would have the voice of the student body that the privilege of speaking before you required. Mr. Walter and Ms. Lawrence did their best to convince me otherwise. Ms. Lawrence and I spoke a long time in her office, and when we had finished, I was almost convinced. I then shared my concerns with my communication professor and mentor, Dr. Grabowski and with my TRIO advisor, Christiana Pond. Collectively, these four people helped me to see a few things. One, non-traditional or not, I am a student, and I can speak to the challenges and triumphs that every student experiences. The late nights, the procrastination, the struggles of having all of the big assignments due at the same time, and balancing academics with work, family, and extracurriculars. Two, they helped me to see that my unique story is a strength rather than a weakness, and that others could relate if I were to share it. So, here I am, and I would like to share with you my DSU story. I am a former Jehovah's Witness. I was born into the faith, knocking on doors and not celebrating holidays. It was a small, protected world, and going to college was strongly discouraged. I was taught that a college degree was not important for finding a job, and that sex, drugs, and drinking were to allow you to get to know the people around you. The faculty and staff I met the day I visited campus were friendly and accessible, and it was obvious that every student mattered. In fact, after having met Drs. Grimes and McBee and Mrs. Barnhart from the Language and Literature Department, I remember thinking, these are my people. And I knew I had made the right choice in coming to Dickinson State. When I started at DSU, it had been 20 years since I had been in a classroom. Rather than being nervous about going back to school, I approached my higher education experience with openness. 
I turned down the opportunity to be a TR scholar, which is an incredible program, by the way, because I wanted to keep my options open to take a wide variety of classes. At the suggestion of Dr. Grimes, I became a writing tutor my second semester at DSU. And this semester marks three and a half years that I have had the privilege of helping my fellow students improve their writing. I've served on committees where I was the only student, and I've performed in a couple theater productions. I worked as an NSO leader and as both a writing intern and graphic design intern in the university relations office. By saying yes to as much as possible, I was able to see firsthand that the DSU experience is about people. I honestly cannot think of one of my professors who was not supportive and readily available to talk if I had questions or needed help. Doctors Grimes and Grabowski in particular strongly encouraged or gently pushed me to take advantage of opportunities beyond the classroom that I would not have done otherwise, thus expanding my education and my skill set. Looking back at all of my professors and everyone I have worked with, I can think of something I've learned from each of them within and beyond the classroom. Because I am a non-traditional student, I sometimes felt that I was lost in a void. I felt that I was too old to make real connections with my classmates and believed because I was a student I couldn't make real connections with my professors. I sometimes felt like I really didn't fit anywhere. But actually, just the opposite was true. My unique position allowed me to do more. I participated in campus events as a student and made friends with classmates. I was able to work with and make friends with faculty and staff. I am a non-traditional student, but everyone has had their own unique experience and journey they have followed to be here today. And whether we go on to graduate school or to enter the workforce, we will all, that journey will be different for everyone. We will be different and yet we will all be the same. I wish my fellow graduates all the luck in the world. This university is fortunate to attract truly good people. And I know each of us will continue to succeed because of what we have learned from our time here at DSU. Thank you. Our other student speaker is Ms. Alicia Dorshak. While at DSU, Ms. Dorshak was a Theodore Roosevelt Honors Leadership Program Scholar, Student Senator, and a member of Phi Beta Lambda, Sigma Beta Delta, Omicron Delta Kappa, and the Collegiate Farm Bureau. She was also a Fellowship of Christian Athletes Student Leader and a DSU Rodeo Athlete, participating in the events of goat tying and barrel racing. Outside of DSU, Ms. Dorshak works as an intern at Makoff Kellogg Law Firm, a server at Applebee's, and is a volunteer tutor at Dickinson High School. As I look back on my time at Dickinson State University, I can't help but tear up a little bit as this bittersweet moment known as the undergraduate chapter of our lives closing becomes a vividly clear reality. Some of us know exactly what the next step is for us in life and others have no clue what life after graduation means. Some of us will stay in Dickinson, some will go back home wherever that may be and some may move to a new city. It does not matter the reason that you chose to spend the last four years or possibly
naive, but nonetheless confident freshman. I was ready to show Dickinson State University what I had to offer and welcome any opportunities that came my way. I felt prepared. However, by my second week into college, I realized that there was an extra tab on the courses portion of my Moodle shell. To my surprise, Then, before we even arrived at our first college rodeo of the year, I drove for about 2.7 seconds before I almost hit a parked car at a gas station in Minneapolis. It was at this point that I really started to question whether or not I was cut out for the Finally, before freshman year was over, I had already forgotten 30 at night TR meetings, receiving a warning of suspension. Despite all of that, I made it through freshman year, and actually with quite astounding success at that. I made the president's list, qualified in two divisions of the 2015 National Western 4-H Horse Roundup in Denver, Colorado. Sophomore year brought numerous changes, the biggest being my decision to switch majors. It was with this decision that I met Professor Amy Cass. Not only did she become my academic advisor and Phi Beta Lambda advisor, but she became one of my best friends. It is faculty like Professor Amy Cass, Dr. Holly McBee, Dr. Frank Barney, Dr. Holly Grugge, and Professor Daryl Newbert, along with staff such as Kayla Noah, Mary Kovash, and Annika Plummer, that set Dickinson State University apart from many other universities. Professors that genuinely care about the lives of their students beyond the grades they are receiving. I am an accounting major and had enrolled in history courses to satisfy general requirements. For history made every class interesting. Even two years after I had class with Professor Varney, regarding information about what I needed to know for law school, information about tests, classes, and even people I could contact if I had any further questions. This email brought a smile to my face and made me realize just to what degree Dr. Varney really cares. In no time at all, I was a junior. This year, I really took the term, get involved in your school, to a completely new level, as you heard in my bio. I learned the true meaning of time management. This year, I also turned 21 and learned that the spur is not just something that is on my boots. <laughs> I learned to love the hustle, live in the moment, and enjoy every opportunity I was given. And finally, in the blink of an eye, I was a senior. This year went by with flying colors. I came to realize I spent more time studying for the LSAT and applying to law schools than I actually did completing coursework. This year, I transformed from an Applebee's waitress to an intern at Mackoff Kellogg Law Firm. Special thanks to Professor Haley Kripe for helping me obtain this internship. Within one day of emailing Professor Kripe, I had an interview, and the next day, I received a call that I had the job. Furthermore, I would like to offer thanks to those professors who wrote more letters of recommendation for me than I can even count. I could not be more grateful. Looking at the future, I hope we all think less about the position we want to hold and more about the person we want to be. That we think less about the success we want to achieve and more about the influence we want to have. That we never underestimate the power of believing in someone and offering words of encouragement. Lord knows I wouldn't have achieved half the things I have in this life if it wasn't for the people who believed in me, challenged me, and pushed me to be the best I could be. With that, a special thanks goes out to my parents, family, friends, and coaches who have shaped me into the person I am today. Set out to be the best, have a fire in your soul, and know that you have something unique to offer. You are you, and that in itself carries so much power. Whatever the next step is for you in this life, know that Dickinson State University was a stepping stone for you to get there. 
I pray you enjoyed your time wearing the wings of a blue hawk as much as I did. I'll leave you with the Bible verse I have on the back of this cap, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Fellow classmates, hold your head up high knowing that you graduated from Dickinson State University, that you have everything you need to be successful in the next walk of your life and that you will have a positive influence on this world. Congratulations, class of 2019. We may have been kicked out of the nest to learn how to fly, but we made it, and now we are soaring. Thank you. At this time, we move to the portion of our program where we recognize, honor, and celebrate our graduates. President our ceremony today is a professional photographer who will take a photograph of each graduate as they receive their diplomas from Dr. Wilson. These photos will be made available to the graduates. Our Director of Academic Records and University Registrar, Ms. Kathleen Meyer, will read the names of the candidates as they come forward and approach the platform. On behalf of the faculty whom I represent today, we extend to you, the candidates for graduation, our most sincere congratulations on completion of your degree programs. Again, on behalf of the faculty, we also congratulate the families of the graduates. As you will note, the candidates are wearing blue robes and blue or gray stoles. A gray stole signifies attainment of a Dickinson State University bachelor's degree. Blue signifies attainment of a Dickinson State University's university associate's degree. Also of note are the cords or medallions worn by our honors graduates. Their names and honor recognitions are listed in the program and are designated by the gold cords or silver medallions they wear. The gold cords symbolize academic honors and the silver medallions designate Theodore Roosevelt Honors Distinction. Other cords, stoles, and medallions indicate other memberships. Will all the candidates for degrees please stand? Dr. Wilson. The academic records of these candidates have been examined and they have fulfilled the requirements for graduation for the appropriate academic degree as set forth by the North Dakota State Board of Higher Education and Dickinson State University. Therefore, I recommend the awarding of the appropriate degree that each candidate study of program so they may enjoy the rights, honors, and privileges pertaining to that degree. By the authority vested in me by the State Board of Higher Education and the State of North Dakota, I hereby confer upon you the academic degree which you have completed. Graduates, congratulations. <laughs> so it is now time for you to move your tassels over to the left side, all right. <laughs> graduates, you may now be seated. The graduates will approach the platform by row and receive their diplomas. Alicia Ann Dwarshak. <laughs> Selena Kensi Loveland. <laughs> Ashley Lynn Edwards. T. 
Karen Lee Rose Jacobson. Catherine Marie Riley. Mariah Helen Thiel. Brady R. Wills. Isaiah Gerald Binstock. Kirby J. Cagle. Megan Elizabeth Dolan. Andrea Granados. Ashley Leona Holcomb. Courtney April Holm. Jacob Douglas Lawler. Bryce Patrick Wiegert. Anduar Samuel Alvarez. Kane Joseph Boji. Olivia Hannah Gogan. Brittany Jean Grove. Derek Paul Gunwall. Jessica Lee Gunwall Kirchhoffner. Macklin Rose Hulk. Riley Kate Helmick. Devin Kyler Schwanz. Thomas Bruce Cease. Matthew R. Vandebush. Seth J. Barkley. Austin Cole Bird. Kelsey Elena Craig. Jeffrey Scott Fisher. (laughs) 
Dallas Eugene Fry. Ashray Gautam. <laughs> Tiffany Lynn Gerving. <laughs> Shania Lynn Gross. Samantha Jo Halstengard. <laughs> Raina May Hanley. <laughs> Alexia Mariah Jacobo. Rojan Karahan. <laughs> Michaela Nicole Carey. <laughs> Megan Christine Kubas. Victoria Taylor Kunz. <laughs> Callie Joel Lofsgard. <laughs> Casey Edward Molitor. Dana M. Mossbrucker. Andrea Rodriguez. Justina Catherine Shukard. Luke Wayne Schwagler. <laughs> Stephen R. Shannon. <laughs> Sydney Morgan Schaefer. Megan Lynn Simon. <laughs> Emily Helen Soderberg. <laughs> Alec Hunter Stieg. Melissa Kate Sullivan. <laughs> Kyle Adam Thompson. <laughs> Kaylee Marie Todorov. Rebecca Sue Wendling. Geraldine <laughs> D. 
Darlene Wiseman. Madison Marie Becker. Tara Nicole Wetch. Kelly Marie Aberly. Catherine Jo Dahl. Clara Elizabeth Yepsen. Alyssa Pauline Adolph. Stephanie Michelle Piliani Alner. Mariah Nicole Gamboa. Tristan Alexander Gio. Savi Nicole Herring. Allison Suzanne Hurt. Trey Carson Howard. Kyra May Jagger Larash. Zane William Long Johns. <laughs> Jessica Marie Prouse. <laughs> Elizabeth Carol Shue. Trey Craig Smolak. Yeah. 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 Grace Ann Thorson. Angie Marie Decker. Jenny Lynn May De Los Santos Adkins. Helen Anuku. Jody Ann Arts. Woo! Kaylee Jo Bogue. Woo! Kayla Noel Bond.
Tammy Jo Ann Burke. Christina Marie Culver. Kelsey Ray Dykert. Sonia Rochelle Edwards. Kelsey Jean Frank. Stephanie Marie Haugi. Jamie Lynn Hockenberry. Babukar plus Jallo. Amber Lynn Kanetter. Carrie Ann Mock. Kimberly Ann Nolmeyer. Brandon Jeffrey Adams. Braden Scott Collins. Rachel Lee Dillon. Yeah, Rodolfo Guillen Jr. Peyton Arlene Herbst. Unoloto Masinian. Hunter Logan Moore. Serena Francesca Oliver. Austin Tyler Payne. Lacey Ruby Wade. Jane Marie Prouse. Claire Elizabeth Shoppet. Henry Opuku Aboji. Megan Catherine Adams. Marisol Elizabeth Babia. <laughs> Tariro Cynthia Chetillo.
Gandhi Joel Dutenheffer. Haley Erlene Ecker. Taylor Joel Grisby. Damaris Waconia Muita. Jacqueline Rose Murray. Paola Silvestri. Marissa Thompson Williams. Blaine Lee Ellington. James Timothy Haraldson. We would also like to acknowledge our online graduates. Aaron Hamill, Bachelor of Business Administration, Human Resource Management, uh, Carrollton, Georgia. Lindsay Muse, Associate in Science, Agricultural Sales and Service, Killen, Alabama. Serena Oliver, Bachelor of University Studies, Watsonville, California. Carmen Reinmund, Associate of Science in Agricultural Studies and Service, West Dundee, Illinois and Jade Thompson, Bachelor of Business Administration, Bern, New York. It is my pleasure to present the class of 2019. They are now alumni of Dickinson State University. alumni, there's a lot of people that worked very hard to get you here today. On your right are the faculty and staff that taught you, mentored you, learned with you, listened to you, and helped you get through these last however many years you've been here. So how about you show them your appreciation? But. It, it weren't for all of the other people around you, you wouldn't have been able to make it here or through what you've been through in the last several years. So how about you show your friends, family, and loved ones how you feel about them? I would like now to introduce a representative from our Alumni Association. Mr. Troy Kuntz, a 2011 graduate of Dickinson State University. Troy graduated with a degree in elementary education and has been a teacher at Dickinson Public Schools since graduating from Dickinson State. This last year, he transitioned to, uh, into the role as library media specialist and serves all elementary schools in Dickinson. Troy also serves as a member of the alumni committee with the DSU Heritage Foundation. Platform party, faculty, staff, honored guests, graduates, family and friends. On behalf of the Dickinson State University Alumni Association, I am proud to be among the first to say congratulations. You are a graduate of Dickinson State University and among the close to 15,000 alumni located around the world. As a graduate of this fine institution, I never imagined that I would love my alma mater so much. This place has helped shape students into graduates. 
It prepares you for the next stop in your journey. Over time, I hope that you feel the same love and compassion for your alma mater as I do. This commencement exercise has become a tradition. It is a celebration not only for you, but for those important people sitting in the stands that are your friends and family. The first class to graduate Dickinson Normal School was in 1920, and that was when the Alumni Association was established. Your Alumni Association knows the importance of a Dickinson State University education. You are not only graduating today, but you are now officially members of the Alumni Association. Congratulations and welcome. As an alum, I want you to remember a couple of important things. First of all, as this chapter in your story comes to a close, please remember, no matter where you are, you will always be a DSU Blue Hawk. That may not mean as much to you today as it will in the years to come. Take pride in wearing the blue and gray. These colors symbolize our school spirit. No matter where you move to or what career path you follow, you can always celebrate being a Blue Hawk by wearing these colors. Secondly, stay in touch. Stay in touch with your alumni association. We want to hear from you. Like us on Facebook and follow us as we celebrate the successes of our alumni and our future alums. By staying in touch, you might be able to reconnect with an old friend or even allow us to introduce you to a future employer. Who knows, your story might be the reason a future student decides to attend Dickinson State University. My third bit is most important. When it comes to measuring your own successes, there is no other person that matters but you. Always remember to take time for yourself. No job is ever going to be just 40 hours a week. What you put into your job is what you will make out of your career. A lot of people hope to become rich or famous or successful. However, you are the one that sets the criteria on determining what is rich or what is success. At the end of the day, you are the only one that can make yourself happy. As a Dickinson State alum, our biggest wish for you is happiness. Finally, I want you to take a look around at the classmates, professors, and staff that have also become a part of your family. The graduates sitting next to you and everyone here in Scott Gym are connected for life. That's the greatest treasure that you are going to take away. It is our hope that you will nurture the relationships and remain a big part of the DSU family. As individuals, you can accomplish a lot, but as part of the DSU family, you can achieve so much more. Take advantage of these resources. Stay connected. Use them to assist you, your friends, your family. This has become a home to you, and in the future, we hope to see you occasionally come back to DSU. We will always welcome you home. No one can take away from you what you have earned today. Remember, no matter what, you will always be a DSU Blue Hawk. Thank you. For the recessional, I ask that the jazz ensemble commence immediately following the official closing of the commencement ceremony. The platform party will lead the recessional, followed by the faculty, graduates, and then guests. All remain standing, please, during the recessional. Faculty and graduates will recess back through Scott Gym as they enter during the processional. Guests, please proceed through the curtain or through the doors of Scott Gym to the reception for all graduates and friends in the Weinbergen Gymnasium immediately following the commencement ceremony. You will note we have wonderful DSU departmental banners placed throughout the gym to help you locate faculty and fellow graduates. I would also like to recognize all of the people who worked very hard to make this day happen. The Spring Commencement Planning Committee led by Registrar Kathy Meyer of Academic Records, the Heritage Foundation, Honor Ushers, Jazz Ensemble, Choral, Public Safety, Sodexo, Student Affairs, TREC, our, our Technology Resource Education Center that is streaming this live so that our loved ones, including my own, can watch this happen. 
uh, university relations, the university stores, and last but far, far from least, our wonderful facility staff. They put in a tremendous amount of work to make sure that the gym is set up for all of you people, including measuring the distance between each and every chair. Kid you not. Now, as is our tradition at the end of each commencement since 1920, please stand for the singing of the Dickinson State University alma mater, the words of which are on the last page of the commencement program. I now declare the 2019 Dickinson State University Commencement Ceremony closed.